Uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, uh, this talk is basically has two two parts. Uh, the first part is um, we 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 argue why not all threads are created equal and why that matters for uh, MPI or at least MPI implementations. And in the second case, we uh, propose a new interface uh, for MPI that uh, should make it easier for uh, applications using asynchronous programming models to couple with uh, MPI. Um, okay. Okay. Now, now moves. Um, so when when we talk about asynchronous programming models, what we mean is um, things like uh, C++ did async or OpenMP tasks or uh, TDB, uh, anything where uh, work is somehow dispatched to a scheduler, uh, and that scheduler will even eventually take care of the execution of that work. Uh, of course, there can be uh, constraints on the order of execution, uh, like data dependencies in OpenMP or uh, data flow in uh, C++ uh, uh, future promise pairs. Um, the problem with, it, with MPI is basically that um, MPI, in, when used in tasks, is a dependency between tasks that is not exposed to the scheduler. So here we have two tasks. Um, they have dependencies on their input and output buffers, but um, the send is actually a dependency uh, to to the receive, and the scheduler doesn't know about it. Um, so coordinating the in, the interaction between tasks and MPI is tedious. Um, two years ago, we showed that um, test yield cycles may or may not work. Um, in any case, um, they are inefficient because you have to come back to uh, your task and test for completion of your operation. Uh, so that's not the best way to go. Um, uh, so previously, what has been proposed is uh, the integration of higher level concurrency abstractions uh, with the MPI layer. Um, so one proposal was uh, the task aware MPI, which sits as a slim layer between uh, the application MPI and uh, the tasking library. In that case, uh, it supports OMS. Um, and another proposal was to integrate uh, so-called user-level thread libraries like Argobots and QThreads uh, into MPI implementations. And then whenever the application makes a call into MPI that will block, uh, MPI would trigger um, a scheduling decision uh, in the uh, ULT library. Um, the problem is that um, none of that is portable. Um, Humpy only works with OMPs. Um, in the case of the integrated ULT libraries, you don't even know if your MPI library has ULT libraries integrated or and whether it's the right one. Um, so the code that you see here um, is likely to deadlock. Uh, so this is not portable code. Um, what does the MPI standard say about threads? Um, it says two things. Uh, all MPI calls uh, should be thread safe in a thread compliant implementation. And uh, blocking MPI calls uh, would block the calling thread only. Uh, and this is where things get interesting. Um, I will come to that, uh, back to that in a, in a minute because, or, well, this is basically what, what the integration of the ULT library uh, does. It uh, attempts to um, only block the ULT that is calling, uh, that is calling into MPI. So a correct implementation according to these rules uh, should prevent internal data structure corruption, and that can be done using locks or atomic memory operations. Um, and it shouldn't block the current thread, so it should release uh, mutexes and locks before blocking. Um, the problem is that any MPI implementation that uh, uh, supports P threads is a thread compliant MPI implementation. Uh, so we cannot argue that we should have uh, user-level thread libraries integrated for correctness of the MPI library. Um, portable applications, on the other hand, um, should not rely on implementation details. Uh, we keep telling our users that they should not rely on buffer sizes in the, in the MPI implementation. They shouldn't rely on uh, the eager protocol limit. Uh, and Frankly, they shouldn't rely on whether the MPI implementation has ULT libraries integrated or not. Um, 
the applicate it's the applications task to ensure that all communication is started eventually. Uh, this should not be offloaded to the NPI library, uh, and that means that the application is responsible for coordinating the uh, interaction between MPI and the scheduler. Um, the question goes deeper, however, um, and that is what constitutes a threat. Um, and when we when we looked for this uh, through the archives of the internet. Uh, we found this interesting quote uh, from 2004, which says, we're actually in the threat process terminology crisis in Linux. Uh, various people have various ideas about what we should mean by threat, process, task, and threat group. Um, and 16 years later, the HPC community is uh, in quite a similar situation. We have all kinds of things that are somehow called a threat, and many people mean many different things uh, when they use that term. So, uh, we set out to create a taxonomy for this work uh, because we needed something to work with uh, uh, in this paper. Uh, and we don't claim that this is um, universal, but maybe people may want to pick up on it. Um, so just a quick overview here. Uh, there's more in the paper. Um, we call a kernel thread a, a thread that is managed in kernel space uh, that can be for I.O., that can be for signal handling, uh, or it can be a lightweight process, which is a thread that is assigned to a specific process. Uh, and is then the basis for a user thread. Um, so user threads typically run on a lightweight process. Um, and user threads are the lowest system level concurrency abstraction in user space. Uh, typically, that's provided either by the, by, uh, the libc or the p thread. Um, it can be mapped one to one or end to end to a uh, lightweight process. Um, different operating systems like Solaris and uh, some BSD flavors had uh, end to end mappings. Now everyone has one to one mappings. Um, and they're, they're always, except for one weird exception that we found, uh, scheduled preemptively. And this is what um, we mean when we talk about the thread. And then there are fibers. Uh, fibers are user space execution contexts. Uh, it's basically the stack uh, of the execution and some memory uh, to save the register file in case the fiber is uh, switched up. Uh, they are scheduled cooperatively and they're executed by threads. So if a fiber makes a call uh, that will block, it will block the whole thread. Um, <clears throat> and then we have tasks. Uh, tasks are these packages of work that I mentioned earlier. Um, and their execution state, state can be either hosted in a fiber or a thread. And that is um, in OpenMP, uh, you could have both uh, their examples for both of them. Uh, so an interesting observation here is that uh, user-level threads are actually fibers. Um, you can compare them to Boost Fiber or Microsoft Fibers. Um, the concept has been um, popularized in the 90s. Uh, so it has been around for uh, quite some time now. Um, and more interesting, the underlying shepherds or execution streams are what we mean when we uh, say threads. So those are typically P threads on POSIX systems. Um, and I found this interesting paper, unfortunately, after uh, the, uh, our paper was done. Uh, if you want to have a quick overview of what our fibers and uh, what their problems are, um, this was an interesting read. So, really, when when people say user level threads or queue threads, um, we should call it a fiber. And then kernel level threads or execution streams really are uh, threads in the traditional sense. So uh, we think that uh, fiber integration should be considered harmful uh, because it's not mandated by the standard. Any MPI implementation that supports P threads is perfectly fine. Um, and it even worse, it uh, fosters the development of an application ecosystem that is non-portable. MPI prides itself with uh, being a portable uh, communication abstraction and by um, encouraging users to use blocking sends where they shouldn't use blocking send or receive operations, um, we, it, we are going into the wrong direction. And uh, another point that I haven't made here uh, explicitly that I uh, think is important uh, unsolicited context switches can actually be harmful for performance. If you think about 
a sequence of RMA operations in MPI. Um, if your MPI implementation, without you knowing it, starts uh, switching out your, your execution context, uh, all the latency goes down the drain. Um, so uh, this was the negative part of the talk. Now comes the positive part. Uh, how can we do better? Uh, so let's separate concerns here. Um, MPI should manage communication concerns, uh, and as it does that already. Uh, it manages all the communication, of course. It allocates requests, hands out these requests to the application, and takes them back eventually. These requests represent arbitrary operations uh, that are managed by MPI. Um, the application layer should manage task tasking concerns. Uh, so the application uh, is programmed using some form of task abstraction or higher level concurrency abstraction, uh, and it should be the application's task to manage that. And the question is, how can we loosely couple these different concerns? And the answer that I found uh, are continuations. Um, continuations have been around for many, many years now. As a concept, they date back to research on ALGO 60. Um, a, an example in C++ would be Stit Future Den, where um, Stit Future represents uh, in an asynchronous activity, and once that activity is complete, the continuation will be executed. So we can uh, provide the application with some form of continuation to couple or to to achieve this coupling here. <clears throat> and for that, we are proposing uh, three new interfaces uh, that we call MPI continuations. Uh, the first function here, uh, MPI continue in it initializes a continuation request. Uh, it's basically used to accumulate a, a set of uh, continuations, and I will come back to that in a minute. Um, then we have M MPI continue, which uh, takes an operation request, um, a callback function, and some data that will be passed to the callback function, uh, plus an optional status uh, that will be set before the callback function is invoked. And then we pass it the continuation request. And there is um, MPI continue all that is similar to MPI continue, uh, except that you pass it a set of requests and a set of statuses, and the, the continuation will be invoked as soon as all of the operations represented by these requests is completed. Um, the continuation request that I mentioned in the beginning uh, uh, as I said, they accumulate and track the set of active continuations that have been um, registered. So it can be used to progress uh, outstanding operations and check for the completion of all registered um, uh, uh, continuations. And the interesting part is here that uh, it may, may itself have a continuation attached because it's just another regular request. So you can build more complex structures of um, uh, continuations uh, if you want. There may be one continuation per non-persistent operation um, because the, the call to MPI continue actually uh, takes back the ownership of the request. Uh, this is done to avoid race conditions between uh, the code that registered the continuation and the code that, uh, or the thread that executed the uh, the actual continuation. So as soon as a continuation is uh, registered, um, uh, uh, the request is returned back to uh, MPI if it's a non-persistent operation. And then I would refer you to the paper for uh, the details on these uh, continuation requests, some of the restrictions. For example, we say that um, uh, continuations shouldn't be executed inside a signal handler because uh, the, oper the, the set of operations that you can perform there is too restricted. Uh, it has about the status handling is there and some of the rationales here. Um, one of the points that I want to mention here explicitly is that the benefit of having this as an MPI interface is that uh, first, uh, it's always available to applications, so we, sh we don't have to rely on third party libraries. And then uh, the invocation of the continuations can happen as soon as uh, the implementation sees that an operation is complete. And that means that we don't have to wait for a call into some third library party, uh, third party library at some point 
uh, to actually progress uh, outstanding completions. Um, so to show you an example how that interface can be used, so here we uh, initialize a continuation request and then we create two OpenMP tasks. Um, they have a dependency on this receive buffer and the first task is detached. And then uh, the first task uh, starts the receive operation and um, uh, registers a continuation. Uh, what I didn't mention earlier was that the that MPI continue takes a flag argument and that flag signals whether the operation was found to be complete at the time of the registration. Uh, and if that is the case, uh, the implementation won't invoke the uh, continuation directly, but instead it will leave it to um, the implement uh, to the application to do that. And the the uh, continuation uh, in this case looks fairly simple. All we have to do is tell the OpenMP library that uh, the event has completed and this dependency can be released so that that task can be uh, executed. Now, uh, there is the outstanding uh, problem of progress. Um, in this case, progress can be triggered by simply calling MPI test on uh, the continuation request. So the application doesn't have to maintain uh, lists of requests um, that have to be thread safe and et cetera. All it has to do is invoke a test on this request and that can happen either inside a, a progress thread in the implementation or in the application. It can happen inside the recurring task that resubmits itself or uh, OMS2 um, actually provides uh, the notion of a service where you can register a callback that is uh, invoked repeatedly. Um, the uh, proof of concept implementation was done in OpenMPI. Um, there is some slight overhead um, that was uh, for, for requests that do not have a continuation attached and uh, we found that to be about 12 instructions, which is roughly 2%. Uh, if you attach a continuation uh, to a request, uh, then this is about 300 instructions, which includes the registration and the invocation of the continuation. And here we have um, a bunch of um, function calls, which always, of course, take more than one instruction uh, for the setup. So uh, we think that this is still a uh, reasonable, reasonable overhead. And the, the, the following measure, me measurements were done on a dual socket uh, 12 core Intel Haswell system that uses a ConnectX free fabric. Uh, we wanted to run this on larger systems, but due to COVID and an international security instance earlier this year, um, there was just no way we could uh, get stable measurements on our new system. Um, first of all, we ported the uh, OZU benchmark, the point-to-point -point latency benchmark to using I send and I receive instead of send and receive uh, to measure the, the overhead of using continuations. So here, the purple one is uh, OMP master uh, vanilla. Uh, the green one is uh, OpenMPI with continuations implemented, but not used. And then the red one is uh, OpenMPI with continuations used to uh, send uh, the uh, reply in the ping pong. And here we see for smaller messages, when using the continuation uh, to handle the reply, there is a certain overhead, but that uh, levels out uh, if we increase the message size. And then what was interesting for us was to compare against the integration of a ULT library with um, uh, MPI or with the MPI implementation. And here we have uh, um, different setups. One is uh, having one execution stream um, and one fiber. And if we increase the message size here, uh, we see that for smaller message sizes, the latency of using the continuation is actually higher. Um, uh, that is because the yield that is used in the MPI implementations provides a lower latency than the um, conditional variables that we're using in the, uh, in the uh, continuation um, to block the, the task, to block the thread at the ULT and then um, uh, release it again. If we uh, use 12 execution streams and uh, 12 fibers, uh, what we see is that the conditional variables used in the continuations uh, provide significantly lower latencies. Uh, so here we're talking about a factor between two and three. Um, 
because probably so I think probably because um, it makes the life of the scheduler easier when we're using when we're actively blocking the task and not just building. And then if we scale the number of uh, fibers, um, so Argobots in that case, uh, again, we see for one execution stream, um, there's a high, slightly higher latency than uh, with the integrated uh, Argobots in MPI. But for 12 execution streams um, uh, across the range, uh, using continuations provides a lower latency. And then uh, we also ported uh, the NASPER benchmark, BTMC benchmark, <clears throat> to C++ simply because that was easier for us to handle. And we implemented it in, in different versions. One, the green one, where we replaced uh, the work sharing constructs with uh, OpenMP task constructs, but the communication still happens in the central point. Uh, and then we used Clang uh, or detached tasks in Clang, uh, where the communication happens inside tasks. Um, we also ported it to OMS uh, and used it in combination with Tumpy. And uh, um, using continuations together with OMS. And we see here that uh, with Tumpy, we get a slightly more than a 1% 1, 1 uh, speed up over, uh, well, with continuations, we get slightly 1% uh, speed up over uh, uh, Tumpy. And uh, for uh, uh, when using detached tasks, uh, we get a more significant speed up because here, uh, we don't have the central point where the communication is done. And we couldn't do that with any other means in OpenMP. Uh, so to, to conclude here, uh, we really think that we should reconsider the convoluted use of the term threat uh, in the MPI, but also in the broader HPC community. Um, we think that the integration of high-level concurrency abstractions in the MPI is potentially harmful because uh, it leads to non-portable applications. Uh, and the proposal that we're, that we're making is to enable loose coupling through MPI continuations to make the life of application developers easier. Progress is still an issue, but uh, we provide um, an easy way to trigger progress. And this is a wink to the uh, OpenMP people uh, to maybe provide us with something like uh, services. And we've shown that um, uh, there can be an efficient implementation. Uh, I'll be happy to answer questions, and I know that this is uh, quite controversial, so I was hoping to discuss this over coffee, but if you have any feedback, uh, you're welcome to send it uh, to my email address. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, so, any question for him? Okay, yeah, yeah, I know. This question is for Okay, uh, so no question. I have a question. Maybe you said that, but I had a little problem with my network. Why is the the difference among the overhead using OpenMPI and MPIT? Oh, that I don't know. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I, I, I don't know that it was both the latest Git repositories um, built with Argobots. Uh, that's all I can say. I didn't dig into why MPICH has a higher overhead there. Um, I, yeah. Okay, that's a good question. <laughs> Okay, so if there is no other question, thank you, Joseph. Thank you.